Hey, new little video. Um, on this one, it's going to be interesting. I'm doing a course right now online, which is free, and I send the link uh, that I highly recommend. And uh, part of the course now, I'm in module four, and it's so ver it's very interesting. And uh, I wanted to share a concept that now I'm going to be applying. And obviously, I've just learned that. Uh, but I wanted to share because it's so exciting. Uh, and um, I wanted to share with you because uh, I think it really can help our, um, our approach uh, to stuff. Obviously, the course is more oriented towards doctors, uh, medical students, uh, and residents. But I think as a nurse, we can use it as well. And basically, is to see the uh, probability. So when we send a test, do I need to continue... So the, 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 the reason of the test is if I uh, send this blood test or the, this CAT scan or something, should I, uh, is that in my differential, is that disease will come out or come in? And uh, it's very interesting. Anyway, in the course, they talk a little bit more about how to do it. But I'm going to try to show you now that the approach that I'm going to have uh, when I'm going to see uh, some people. So I'm going to show you the approach. So let's say you get someone comes in as uh, with uh, shortness of breath, and you're doing your uh, physical exam and you, you're taking your story. Um, so doctors, and this is one thing that I find in nursing we don't have, and actually this course kind of re-emphasis how sometimes all we're taught it's lacking. This, this component of, uh, of getting our mind to do a critical care approach to it. And again, yes, doctors are more, they're there for the diagnostic, they're there for the treatment, but as as person that uh, sh uh, are there to, uh, just like a lawyer versus a judge, I have to know as much as the law as the judge so I can present my case very nicely. Um, I think in this approach, it's not so much to come out with the diagnostic, but to have some ideas of what's going on, so that, because um, I say that a lot, but 85% of the time, I think, we kind of have a monkey job. I mean, you know, like you take the blood pressure, the chest pain comes in, you do your story and stuff. But it's that 15% that we make a difference. It's not those very sick or non-sick patients that we're going to make a difference. Those ones comes and stuff, but it's those gray ones that we could have, uh, that, that, uh, that shortness of breath, that uh, there's something strange about it, that you can go grab the doctor quickly or increase in the priority, especially when they're 10 or 15 to be seen. Those are the ones that we should need. So it's not so much that we need to do the right diagnostic at the end, but it's more like if we can get our brain around so that I can know that this patient is, looks sicker than when I initially got. And to be able to do that, that means that we have to have in our brain, always in, in the mind, in the back seat, to look further than what we have, than what we have in front of us, or know what to look for of what a sick patient looks like. Because the very sick ones, it's easy. I mean, nobody, without even a training, somebody with in cardiac arrest will know it's in cardiac arrest. But the thing is, can I prevent it from going to the cardiac arrest? So this would be a sub. So uh, the first step is that once, so you come to this person with the shortness of bread and stuff, and they, they were showing it. So for, for example, we'll take like shortness of breath. Um, so vascular wise, well, you know, you could have maybe uh, pulmonary hypertension, okay, so there you go. Uh, infection, well, you, know, you could have bronchitis, you could have, um, you could have uh, pneumonia, vascular, actually bronchitis would probably go more on advanced. Neoplasts, well, you could have lung cancer. Uh, drugs, uh, ACE inhibitors, so ACE inhibitors can create some shortness of breath or dry cough. Inflammatory process, uh, the bronchitis. There you go. That would go probably over there. An idiopathic, um, something that would create it. That um, he just got a uh, an operation or something. Could they have left something there? Congenital. Uh, not sure about that one. Autoimmune. Uh, do they have um, asthma? CPD. Uh, 
lupus, uh, all those ones that could kind of attack, trauma, did they have a, a chest, a pneumothorax or something like that, an endocrine, uh, endocrine metabolic, uh, shortness of breath, um, I guess DKA, yeah, DKA, they could get like a, a cosmal breeding, so it looks like shortness of breath, but basically they're breeding faster, so let's, let's say that. So you see, by doing this, the shortness of breath now, it's not just ads of pneumonia and ads this. I have a whole list of things, right? And just by reading quickly like this, I didn't even prepare for that. I just took that out of my head. So by doing this, this mnemonic right there, I have a list of things that can happen. So then what they say is that you generate that list. And then the second thing that you do is that um, you look for the sh sham, sham of, of disease and basically is that certain disease and it's basically like a circle like this Oops. Sorry. so if shortness of breath is in those three connected let's say uh, so we were talking about pneumonia, PE and uh, uh, DKA, there you go um, so they would all show up with shortness of breath, but DKA they would show up with certain stuff specific to DKA, so like high sugar uh, that the other tree wouldn't have actually. Um, that could be one that uh, if they're diabetic, uh, pneumonia, people could have high sugar as well because they're more sick and everything, so they could have like a high sugar. So that would be like. Up between those two, but PE probably wouldn't affect the sugars. Um, but on this one, they could probably have hemoptysis, which DKA wouldn't have. So you see what I mean is that there's some disease that the pro the the details of the of the disease would have some categories than the other ones. When you do your your assessment. That's the question you ask. Do you have hemoptysis? Uh, you know, are you coughing? Do you have a dry cough? Is it wet cough? Is it what color it comes up? And this thing helps you put things in different category that you can kind of sub. So basically in your assessment, you're looking for specific of disease, we'll call that. I forgot the name of the, that they were giving the course, but basically that's the way it is. Thirdly, after that, you kind of want to get one, so all of your, let's say we got uh, 10 things on the list, you want to have the one, number one or two, that it's going to be out of the 10 list. And as well, when you put them, so we're going to take like the first two, but if on your 10 list, uh, let's say, uh, for example, if it would be back pain, I wrote the dissection, could be one that would be low on your list, but still, if, if one that you miss, it's uh, have high consequences. So then you still want to rule those up. And that's why they come mostly for the emergency. So like when you have chest pain, yeah, like maybe this person doesn't sound like he has an MI, but I still want to rule it out because if I miss an MI, it can have a lot of consequences. Versus a UTI, if it's low on my list, if I miss it, um, the person will probably come back. Of course, yeah, chronically they could get like uh, more complication, but it's not one that I can, if I miss it today, I can still catch it tomorrow. But if I miss a dissection today, I will not catch it tomorrow because the person will be dead. Well, the coroner will catch it, but I won't. So this is what, when you generate your list, if, and if any on those lists, there's things that are high risk, what you do is you put a category one, so what one is the most uh, suspicious of it? And there's another category that they call, so that would be the one, and there's a category called 1E, and this is what it is, uh, emergency. So you don't put like everything that you want to rule out, but if in your 10 disease, like we were saying, the section, so anybody that has a lot of back pain and has the right uh, category, so it has a... Um, a certain age group that is higher risk, so the epidemiology, again, so you need to know the epidemiology of the disease, um, then you need to put it in there and that means that you need to rule it out. Not so much to rule it in, but rule it out to make sure that it's not there, and so, but it's still back in your head. So you make your list like this and you take 
the one or two uh, that are in first category. So if I couldn't make difference between P and, and because there's so many things that are similar to both, then I have to rule out those two. So that means the test that I'm going to do is going to uh, be helpful for that. And this is the uh, fourth part. It's choosing if you're going to rule in a disease or rule out a disease. And uh, we'll see why I'm talking about this section later. It's cool, like you'll see what I'm talking about. To rule in a disease, it, that's where the test comes from, is that um, you're going to use the mnemonic spin and to rule out, you're going to use the mnemonic snap. So let's uh, clear that a little bit here. Um, so four, you're going to use your spin or your snout. So as you can see, in or out. Spin is for specificity and uh, snout is for sensitivity. So meaning that uh, when you're going to choose a test, you need to understand the sensitivity and the specificity. So just instead of changing all your blood work, you need to know why you're sending what or if you're sending someone. So if we're sending someone for CT, just for center CT, then we're kind of missing out the stuff. So that's why I'm talking about being an advocate for your patients by knowing that. So SPIN means that a test with a high specificity, so higher the specificity, is that it's going to rule in the disease. So if I don't know if I have it or not, and the test comes back positive, it's going to rule it in. Snout means the sensitivity. So higher is the sensitivity is that I'm going to rule out that disease. Why is that important? Well, you remember that one and one E category? Well, the section, I wanted to rule it out. So I'm going to look for a high sensitivity um, test. Or if it's not on my diagnostic, but I want to make sure that it doesn't have it, sometime I'll use another test that could be snow, uh, a snail in it. So that means that I can use a specific, a high specificity test that's going to be. And again, it depends on also what you have. So I know like if I don't know the, the exact numbers, but if I have someone with um, 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 the section at high risk, I'm going to do a CT of the chest. And, but the problem is that a lot of radiation. Well, do we do CT of the chest of everybody that has back pain or that has like some, some stuff that could have like a, looked like a dissection? No. Well, there's maybe another. And in the fifth category, you're gonna ask yourself, so once you're, you're deciding what category they are, on a scale of one to 10, 10 would be very likely that they have the disease. You're trying to put that on. So your two little disease that you want to rule that in or rule that out or the category one, one and one E, you're going to ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how am I, I'm going to do that? Uh, where are they on it? Are they on a five out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 or an eight out of 10? Or I pretty much they have none of the symptoms. So I don't think they have. So they're more like one out of 10. And the reason you're going to do this is that it's going to give you a percentage. And this is where uh, people that have iPhones, it's going to be pretty cool, cool. And I don't know if there's a, an app for the um, uh, other phones, but um, the phone uh, on my iPhone, it's called Mediquation. That one right over there. And the cool thing with that app is that uh, there's a whole bunch of them, but it's called the Bayesian sensitivity and specificity. So we're gonna do, um, I see I'm at the end of my, uh, of my video there. We're gonna do another one explaining to you uh, on that case. So we'll be back.